For more on what's next in the presidential race, we're joined by Nancy Cordes. She's here in New York, as you see, and Robert Costa's in Washington. Good morning to you both guys, but Bob, we're going to start with you. As Anthony just pointed out, the independents and the moderate Republicans have some concern about Donald Trump at this point. Is his team doing anything? Do they need to do anything to address that? They might need to, Gail, in the coming months. But at this point, you didn't hear anything from former President Donald Trump last night about reaching out to Haley. There's a belief inside the Trump campaign that ultimately those traditional Republicans, even if they have some reservations about Trump, will come home because they want to oppose President Biden on issues like border security and the economy. But Haley is not going to issue an endorsement today. She's going to think about her own political capital. And she now sees herself, her allies tell me behind the scenes, as the standard bearer for those traditional GOP values. And she's not going anywhere in terms of trying to have an influence. It'll be very interesting to see the language she uses today, Bob. But let's talk about you for a second, because we understand you have reporting about Trump's efforts to shore up his campaign finances. What can you tell us about that? Donald Trump is now the presumptive nominee for Republicans, but he's facing a real cash crunch, both personally and politically. The Democrats are raising so much money. And in fact, Gail, in recent days on Sunday, former President Trump met with billionaire Elon Musk. He's also meeting with major donors across the country, trying to make sure he has the capital he needs to compete with the Biden campaign. And you also see him scrambling right now to make sure he can put up that bond in the civil fraud case we've been covering in New York, he now has to put up hundreds of millions of dollars in order to move forward in that case. All right, Nancy, you've been with us the last couple of days. Bob, we'll check in with you in a bit. Um, Nancy, it's clear from the primaries that there are a lot of undecideds um, when it comes to um, the, both parties. Uh, how will the Biden administration go after those moderate Republicans and independent voters. Yeah, I mean, just look at Minnesota last night. 20% of the primary voters there on the Democratic side voted uncommitted. That's bigger than the number that voted uncommitted in Michigan the week before, even though that was much more organized. So, yes, the Biden campaign has some work to do. What they argue is that when it comes to a general election, they are where those independent voters are on big issues like abortion, like taxes, like lowering prescription drug costs. And they argue, as Bob was just pointing out, that they've got the resources, they've got the money, they've got the infrastructure to make that case effectively in a general election campaign. The Trump campaign, they argue, they laid it out in a campaign memo just this morning, is saying the opposite. They're mm -hmm. saying, if you are not MAGA, we don't want you. Mm. And that is not a winning general election message. Also, it doesn't sound like a united message. I'm still thinking about Bob saying Donald Trump and Elon Musk meeting. I'd like to be a fly on the wall for that one. But let's talk about the State of the Union tomorrow. What do you think President Biden needs to do? What does he need to say? Mm. How does he need to look? Well, he has to have a strong performance. He has to give a good speech. He's been spending a lot of time holed up with his advisors working on the speech. Uh, he has to lay out what he's accomplished. Poll after poll shows that people still don't realize what he's gotten done. You were just talking to Anthony about the fact that people don't feel like the economy is that great. Mm -hmm. And so he needs to make the argument that inflation is down, unemployment is down, job growth is up, wages are up. Beyond that, he wants to talk about what he thinks he can accomplish if Republicans work with him. He's going to make the case, hey, I'm trying to move to the middle on border control, mm -hmm. which is a big deal for mm -hmm. a Democrat, but I'm not getting a, a, a hand being held out from the other side. Yeah. He's going to argue he's trying to do something about what is one of his weakest issues right now. The, the State of the Union is rarely, if ever, this late in the calendar yeah. year, right? It's in March. It really ends up being quite a political gift, an opportunity for Joe Biden to get a huge audience and lay out right. his priorities. It was initially viewed as kind of a diss by the Republican speaker that he was inviting him this late in the calendar. But uh, it now turns out, as you, you point out, Tony, to be something of a gift. The, the general election is now officially underway, and that's how the Biden campaign is viewing it, as the kickoff to the general election. All right, right here now, America. Here we come. Yeah, here we right come. That. Bob and Nancy. Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy ride. Right. Yeah. Um, Bob and Nancy, thank you. Appreciate Thanks, it.